Thank you, Brandon. We put a car on the moon is the title of this presentation. The most important thing I learned being in the hazardous waste disposal business is the most dangerous chemicals we've ever invented are actually drugs used to cure horrible diseases such as cancer. And we know this. Merck, Pfizer, guys in spacesuits, operating robots. Zero human exposure. When they, then we then ship them on a high level Department of Transportation regulations to specialty pharmacies where the technicians mix a cocktail of these chemicals in special hoods inside million dollar rooms. We treat cancer in a couple different ways. Radioactivity and chemical activity. And they have the same effect. We should have the same respect for both. Think of Three Mile Island, Chernobyl. So then we then give these chemicals, this mixture, to the nurse who's in a hazmat suit. She injects it into the patient, filling them up like a balloon, and then we send them home to their families. We're up to 90% of the chemical comes right out in the sweat, in the saliva, in the urine, and in the stool, contaminating our family members, our homes, right down the drain into our drinking water systems. It is a crime to take the empty vial, the wrapper, or for that matter, the gloves, or anything that came in contact with the cytotoxic chemotherapy drug and put it in the trash. Yet we allow uncontrolled discharge of some of the most dangerous chemicals ever invented right down the drain into our water. I was working at a hazardous waste facility and in 2007 and the guys had a drum full of syringes. And in the syringes was a chemical called mustergen. So you're probably thinking, maybe it goes on a hot dog. That chemical is liquid mustard gas. Interestingly, it was the first chemotherapy drug we used in the 1940s. So I thought, Somebody has to be looking at this. And lo and behold, our government has an agency called OSHA that looks at every chemical and every pharmaceutical, thousands of them. And OSHA has compiled a list of 233 hazardous drugs. And to quote OSHA, many hazardous drugs are known human carcinogens for which there is no safe level. So, I'm going to go back on that one. So what we did, the team of experts, we took the drug insert, which tells you how much of that drug passes through in the urine, and how much in the stool, and how quickly and we cross-referenced it with OSHA's 233 drugs and we came up with a list of 27 highly excreted, highly carcinogenic, highly mutagenic, teratogenic. That means they cause cancer, miscarriages, birth defects. So around this time, my mother was going through a cancer treatment. My daughter was four. She's now 12, and she's right over there in the audience. So at Thanksgiving, I made my daughter and my wife sit in the car while I inspected her medicines and read the drug inserts. Now, even though it was safe, it, the period for where the, these chemicals are excreted had passed, I still wouldn't let my mother kiss my daughter. And I had my daughter use a separate, separate toilet. Let me go on a tangent here. That's a catfish with cancer. 
on Cape Cod. 62% of the catfish in this one pond have cancer. The US EPA spent a billion dollars, with a B, cleaning up the Otis Air Force Base because the contamination from the base went underneath this pond. They hired the US Geological Survey. And the US Geological Survey said, the fish have cancer from an ongoing exposure to a genotoxic substance that's still in the water. The substance they equated it to is a drug called cyclophosphamide. A genotoxic substance, doesn't that sound pretty scary? That's toxic to the genes. That means it alters human DNA. Cyclophosphamide. That's the basis of breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, and blood cancers. We give a patient four grams of this material. One gram comes out in the urine in 24 hours. That's enough to kill a child. Never mind that it causes cancer, causes birth defects, causes miscarriages. So I talked to the authors of this study, and they asked the EPA to do further study to see if they can find the source of this cyclophosphamide. EPA said, cyclophosphamide, that's a drug. You should call the Food and Drug Administration. And they canceled the program. We know what causes cancer. There's a list. There's 104 known carcinogens. I divide it into passive carcinogens, such as sunlight and tobacco, and active carcinogens such as plutonium and cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs. I was giving this presentation at the Clean Med Conference a couple years ago, and a cancer researcher came up to me in the drug industry and said, 5-fluorouracil, that's, that's one of our drugs. That's what I give my rats so they get cancer so I can figure out how to cure it. Unbelievable. Cyclophosphamide. There was a study done a couple of years ago by a, a researcher out of Sweden in Japan, Dr. Paul Sessing. Very nice guy. What he did is he tested the urine of the cancer patient's family members for cyclophosphamide. Every one of the samples had high levels of the drug in the family members. Drugs, drugs known to cause cancer, known to cause birth defects, known to cause miscarriages. What was strange is the levels were higher than they found in nurses or people working with these drugs back in the 80s. The reason the nurse is in a hazmat suit is because in the, in the, in the 80s, a study in Finland, they found that nurses had a miscarriage rate of more than twice the normal nurse, 2.3 times to be exact. And when they finally had children, they had a birth defect rate of almost five times the normal nurse. Five times. That's why we are so careful with these chemicals. The Paul Sessing study prompted the American Industrial Hygiene Association. They have a hazardous drug committee. They asked me to give a presentation on controlling cytotoxic human waste. Every cancer hospital in the country was there. Very, very nice people. 
they know they have a problem. They just don't know how to solve it. Or who's going to pay for it. We can solve this problem. We know how to. Patients can collect their urine for a couple of days after treatment. We can give them bed linens. We can give their caregivers gloves and some common sense chemical control procedures. We had some legislation in Rhode Island last year to require the collection of human waste containing cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs. Dr. Peter Boyle flew in from Europe and testified. That's his testimony. Dr. Boyle was the head of epidemiology, which is the study of what causes cancer, for the Harvard School of Public Health. After that, he ran the International Agency for Research on Cancer for the World Health. Dr. Boyle is not alone. In 2012, the European Commission hired a division of Deloitte called Biointelligence to study medicines in the environment. Two years, 300 pages, 500 references, and they come to the same conclusion. The best control measures for such highly toxic drugs may be simply the prevention of urine and feces from entering sewers. The last time I talked to Christian Daunton, he said, 20 years from now, we're going to look back on this and say, what the, like, were we thinking? If you ask pharma, the largest lobbying group in the world, they'll tell you, from the drug insert, we told you so. Hospitals will tell you, this is a societal problem. What happened to that oath? Don't they take a do not oath? A Hippocratic oath? How about the hypocritical oath? About two years ago, I flew down to uh, Atlanta and I met with the chief medical officer of the American Cancer Society, Dr. Otis Browley. He looked at me and said, I never thought of that. And then he followed up with, we know cancer runs in families. Husband, wife, adopted children. But we don't know why. How about we're sending people home, excreting profusely chemicals that are known to cause cancer, known to cause birth defects, known to cause miscarriages. We don't know why. It's irresponsible to think the most dangerous category of chemicals ever invented has no effect on the environment because we call them medicines. The scope of this problem at best is enormous. At worst case, this is human trage tragedy on a global scale. Twenty years ago, we didn't know any better. Today, this is an act of gross negligence that we allow the uncontrolled discharge of medicines of mass destruction right into our homes, our families, down the toilet, into our water systems. It is insidious that our governments, our drug companies, our health agencies, all that know, all, all of them know this is a problem, 
They're all aware that these cyto the dangers of these cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs but choose to pretend that they do not have an effect on our people. I am outraged. You should be outraged. My friends, we put a car on the moon, we can collect a peanut cup.